Right, I think I'm finally ready to lock in my FPL team for game week one. Daddy Ings to Villa? Oh yes, Daddy. Ah! Well, uh, okay then. Well, on that bombshell, it's time for my Game Week 1 updated draft. What is up, you sexy sausages? A big boy, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And today, I have my brand new updated. Definitely not completely changed, and every player is definitely not the same as the last time, right? Yeah. <laughs> but with news of our very own Daddy Ings. Daddy? I have been a bit discombobulated, so yeah, a little rejuggle, a little reshuffle, and things have changed, alright? So let's actually get into that. With the goal geezer, the goalkeeper, to be keeping me all of the points, it's not Robert Sanchez, again. <laughs> Seriously, you might as well call me Flip Flop FC, right? Because I'm properly going back and forth, back man and for ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As one draft I have Sanchez, the next draft I have back man. And today, back man is back, man. <laughs> Where Watford had the best defence in the championship, which is usually easier to translate into the Premier League, unlike the attack, right? Uh, it actually is, mind. I even checked Google Translate. He says it translates perfectly, okay? But I actually see Bachman outscoring a Sanchez just because he's more likely a saves and also bonus points. Yes, he might actually get one or two less clean sheets in the first few weeks, but he's much more likely for a big boy double points haul or something, you know? So I'm just going to Bachman myself instead of the crowd, as I actually think he'll get more points than Sanchez. But Bachman is also great if you have Foster on your bench. Whoa, 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 big boy, spoilers, spoilers. Ah, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Foster's on my bench, uh, I like it. <laughs> but now, let's move up to the defense, which is stronger than a diamond. Yeah. I didn't really know what to say and apparently on Google that's the world's strongest thing okay so we're going for it <laughs> the diamond defense I oh, see I like that with the first one of them being Sir Trent Alexander Arnold I literally suck his left toe every single video I make bragging of how good he is in FBL right so I, I don't really know what else to say about him he's just amazing but if you held me at gunpoint and said, Bacon, tell me why you're choosing him. Oh, okay, okay, I will. <laughs> well, last season, he had the highest expected assist out of any defender in his bad season. He's also on free kicks and corners with a big goal threat as well. In a good defence and also has nipple teasing fixtures. Need I say more? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> the next defender to join him here is another one with his feet stuck in the mud as well, as he's literally not left my team. It's Luca Dean. Dean, yeah. He is a very attacking fullback for a team with absolutely spankingly good fixtures, right? So even though we're a bit unsure of how Rafa will do under the Everton, I definitely still think it's worth starting with him because he's got those good fixtures. But because he is priced as slightly more, it's easier to get up to a little bit more expensive defender or just drop down if I need to as well. So absolutely perfect, right? And then the final starting defender is... Are you ready for this? Oh, Jolie Veltman, hey! Now, even though I ain't going near a Sanchez in goals, right? I do rate that bright ton defense, right? Bright ton of potential for all those cleany sheets, oh yes. Where even though they have lost a Benjamin White, the Mr. White, and also had a few other wibbly wobbly injuries as well, for their fixtures, I do think they have one of the best potential to keep clean sheets, which is very, very nice, especially saying their players are very cheap here, like a Veltman, aha. But the reason I have gone for a Veltman over a Sanchez is because he's likely to be a Veltman playing at wing back, ah. So even though Brighton might not actually score a lot of goals, there's probably slightly more chance that Veltman can get himself some attacking returns and maybe even some bonus points rather than Sanchez getting the saves, right? Because Sanchez might get the clean sheets just like Veltman will get, but I don't see many saves and bonus for Sanchez. And with Lamperty likely to miss the start of the season, Veltman is literally just the perfect cheap boy to start with. I love it. And that is actually the start and defense. Dunzo! So I have actually taken a little bit of money out of this, right? I've done my own little bank robbery heist. <laughs> as I have dropped down a Luke Shaw down to a Velti, where with Shaw, I'm still unsure if he'll be fully back, and if he is back and fit, will he actually be fully fit? I mean, he had broken ribs and all that, you know? But also, United have actually had a, quite a bit of a big COVID scare, you know, with some of their players unlikely to make the start of the season, oh dear. <laughs> so for me, it was just a very sensible move to take that money out of the Man United defence, as I just needed a bit of extra cash to splash up into my forwards, right? And you know what, it's looking amazing, so 100% worth it. But now, let's actually move up the field to the midfield, where we start with... No, 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 are you ready for this? I, I, I'm just going to move back, right? Mo Salah! You little dancer! <laughs> 
I'm not going to chinwag about this one too much at all, right? As we have probably hyped up this man this year in FBL more than his own family does, all right? He's just essential, yeah? <laughs> but not only is he that E-word for me, but he's 100% going to be my captain game week one and probably even game week two unless one of his legs falls off. So, um, yeah, he's got to be in. But the next midfielder and the first Man United fella to join us are... Is not Sancho. It is not Greenwood. And is not Wayne Rooney. Okay, that one's probably a bit more obvious, but, uh, you know. <laughs> As this player is Bruno! No, 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 Bruno, yeah! I will not be going Bruno with no Bruno in my team. He's staying in my team, right? As how can you turn down the guaranteedness of having the heartbeat of an improved Man United attack, who also scored the most points out of any other player in FPL last year, whilst also having amazing fixtures. But also, being at that price where you could downgrade to anyone later on, whereas it would be quite damn hard to try and get up to him if you spread that money out straight from the start, right? So for me, 100% though, not worth the risk, so 100% though, in the team for now. But next, we have someone that has been quite tickling my pickle in preseason, you know, no, no. And it is the man who actually loves an equaliser, huh? huh? Can you guess? Can you guess? Well, that man is Harvey Barnacles. Ooh, Harvey Barnes, it's an equaliser. <laughs> now, I know this one might be a little bit wibbly-wobbly, right? As he has just come back from an injury, but he has actually been playing in the last two preseason games and looking quite fresh and zoomy. But you know what? You know what? The fact that he's had an injury could actually be a good thing here in FBL, where I don't think Rodgers will risk playing him too much and definitely probably won't play him in the Europa League in the first few weeks. So that might mean we could have a fully fresh Harvey Barnes every single week, where the rest of the Leicester boys might not get the rest he's getting every week in the league. Uh -huh. But Leicester are also a team that always get off to an amazing start, right? And then literally are completely mudded at the end of the season. Like, what happens to them? So the fact that they play the likes of Wolves and Norwich in the first three, and then the likes of Burnley and Palace in gaming six and seven as well, I reckon he could be a very, very sexy option short term, get some big boy points straight away, but also long term as well. Because honestly, a fully fit Harvey Barnes is literally like a nine to ten million FPL player. He is that good, you know? And you know what? I'm absolutely loving this spicy pick I got here, right? Yeah, yeah. No salt and pepper with this one. All the peri peri. I love it. <laughs> but then the final starting midfielder here is the one and only Rafinha. Now, I have actually been teased by a Buendia now that uh, Ings is here, but I kind of don't want to double up on the Villa attack. Ah, we'll get into that later. But even though Rafinha's fixtures aren't quite the best from the start, I can still see him getting points against anyone because of the type of player he is, but also the team he's in. So the fact that I'll probably want him very soon, yeah, you might as well just start with him and save yourself an extra transfer there when you're here, yeah. Not overthinking it, he's in from the start. And that is actually the starting midfield done. I've stuck with the two premium boys in here, as I am actually one of the cheeky boys that will admit that I will captain Bruno. I probably will do it in game week three, maybe even game week four as well. Then I see Barnes and Rafinha as two players, if they were fully fit all season, are very much underpriced, right? They're honestly such, such great picks. So not only could do very well at the start, but also long term as well. Aha. Uh -huh. But let's move forward, on to our forwards, and the final starting players in this team, yeah. Starting with... Yeah, boy, I've actually gone and done it, lads, all right, because that one, the first one, the first forward here is... Daddy! That is right, I've actually gone for him. I've gone for the Danny Ings in here. Oh, yes, Daddy. Now, I am a massive Daddy Ings fan myself, right? Where I owned him for the season before last, where he went on and scored like 20 goals. I literally got him in when he was like 6 million, when he only scored like one goal. And I also started with him last year. So, uh, yeah, that just kind of shows the relationship I have with Daddy, all right? No Daddy issues here, yeah. <laughs> but now, he has moved to the villa. Um, who the heck? Saw that coming though. Literally nobody suspected that. Um, what? <laughs> but the villains have three very great fixtures at the start. And I got a feeling Ings has got to be straight Ings that team, right? They can't buy him and just not play him game week one or whatever, you know? But also, he will probably be on penalties there as well. Ah. Now, you could say it's a little bit risky, right? Like, he hasn't had a preseason with him. You don't know if he's going to gel well. But honestly, when you have a forward that good, as long as there's good creative players behind him, ah, which he will have, then surely, surely, he will be able to score, especially in those sexy three green fixtures. Uh -huh. But my plan all along with the Villa attackers would just to keep them for 
for three weeks anyway. So even if Ings doesn't pay off or it does pay off, I'm probably going to sell anyway. So uh, no problem with risking that one. But also the fact that Ings is actually priced slightly more at 8 million, it could actually allow a much better future move to happen as well. Aha. Uh -huh. But Ings also being slightly more at 8 million could be amazing, right? As you could very easily drop him down to one of those slightly mid price forwards. Yeah, yeah. So it could be a perfect building block and bridge to get in all of the best attackers, especially when a lot of fixture swings happen, right? Like I'm really eyeing up the likes of like a Jimenez or maybe even a Pookie very soon. So perfect, perfect swap after that. Lovely. Basically, for the first three weeks, he's going to score us all the points and then we will all be shouting. Oh, yes, daddy. <laughs> Next to him, though, is Antonio. When and if the beefy boy himself is fit, he is actually one of the top strikers in the league. West Ham also shown us last year that they are not a team to mess about with anymore, right? They can beat anyone. So the fact that they play the likes of Newcastle Palace and Southampton in the first four, three teams that I think are going to concede quite a lot of goals this year, literally all of the goals for Antonio income in. And he can just do his celebration, you know. With no Europa League and a week's rest in the first few games, Antonio should be alright and shouldn't get injured right at the start, right? So I don't think that is a problem as well. He also has great players behind him, like a Bowen and a Ben Rama, which a lot of people are being teased by, you know. They're like, oh, they are brought particularly my pickle, yeah, yeah, yeah. But as always in FPL, it's usually much better just to go for the main man, right? I've thought about it, and if I was going to go Bowen or Ben Rama, I would probably pair them with Antonio and not an instead. But right now, I've gone for what I've gone for, so Antonio is the man here. And then to finish off, big and boys, premium, starting 11. Oh, it's just amazing, right? With... Callum Wilson, hey! He has been proper in and out and in and out and shake it all about in this team. But with an Ian Acho maybe not starting for Leicester, and even more so in preseason, he doesn't look like he's going to be a regular starter. And now also Watkins being oh, proper all up in the air because of the Ings move. For me, it's got to be Wilson or maybe Tony. But uh, for now, I've gone for Wilson. He's got good home games to start with, whilst also being the main talisman for a Newcastle team who actually looked very attacking at the end of last season, whilst he is also on penalties as well. It's literally the perfect recipe, the perfect ingredients. You pull it out and you get all of the points. Hey, yep, boy, yep, boy. And that is the start in 11 done. We have a very nice team structure in here, don't we? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I do. Agree with me now. <laughs> As we have a premium mid and also a budget defender in there. We have two premium mids and two mid-priced mids. And then also three mid-priced forwards as well. But with Barnes also being slightly more and Ings also being slightly more than the other ones at the mid-price, you know? It also could give me that extra bit of flexibility as it's a bit easier to get up into those other players. Also, if I drop down, could give me even more money as well. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I always forget about my bench, don't I? Anyway, my bench looks like uh, this, <laughs> where we have a Foster as the backup for the backman, as I uh, accidentally spoiled earlier. Oh, terrible, come on. <laughs> so no matter what, we have a playing goalkeeper, unless they go and sign another goalkeeper and he somehow starts now. <laughs> we have an Ailing who does rotate well with a Veltman, but I probably will just leave him for a backup anyway, and it's not a bad backup to have at all. And especially the fact that I am part of the no centre-back club. I don't want a Ben White. I don't want anyone else out there. I want ones with proper attacking potential, you know? Uh, those are the ones I've gone for. We also have a Joshua Brownhill, the best ever FBL midfielder in here for now, but also could switch to a Gilmore because in preseason, he actually took some corners. We'll have to look out for that one. If Gilmore keeps him taking corners, then yeah, you would be very rude not to chuck him in, wouldn't you? Yeah. And then we also have a uh, Liveram and we also have a Liveramento. Yeah, yeah, I got that first time, right? Yeah. <laughs> a cheap 4.0 million boy in the defence there, who has just moved from the Chelsea Academy to the Southampton, so he could get some minutes. And also, if it, not that I probably need him to play, but apparently he's quite good and quite attacking. So if he does play, then you never know. He could just jump straight into that starting 11. Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that is actually my updated, my late dust, my current, whatever type of draft you want to call it. The team I currently have now in FBL. Hey. So that's it. Just completed. Kick back. Relax. Don't touch my team for a whole two weeks now, yeah? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, no, as if we do that. As if. <laughs> but let's actually chinwag and discuss the good, the bad, and the evil with this team, right? As it's not perfect, right? Well... Well, it might be if it scores under points, but uh, probably not. <laughs> so right now, we actually have a bit of fisticuff behaviour in game week one, right? As Bruno will play Rafinha 
Ings will verse my keeper, and also Wilson will play Antonio. So they're all versing each other. Now, attackers against attackers, I don't quite mind, right? Because both teams could score quite easily. But when you have your most expensive striker playing against your keeper in game week one, uh, oh crumbs. <laughs> but I don't mind that at all because FBL is more than just one game week, right? Ings also plays at home in game week one and two, so he could score all of the points there. But also Backman could make saves in a game he loses, and then I reckon he can do quite well after that anyway. So a lovely jubby stuff. We're going to get all the points anyway. Another bad thing here, though, is something uh, very quite bad, actually, is that we have a lot of injury-prone players right now. With the front three strikers literally being hamstring FC, right? As they all have quite a lengthy injury history, right? And they will probably all be playing for hospital FC very soon and out injured, because that's, that's just what they do, apparently. But I am hoping, with no midweek competitions and at least a week rest for the first few weeks, it shouldn't be too much of a problem right at the start. But also, they all have amazing great fixtures right now, right at the start, that I really want to target. But there are also a lot of fixture swings soon after as well. So if we need to jump off, there's no problem with that at all. Because we probably want to jump off them soon, even if they're not injured anyway. But the good things I like about this team, right? I've only mentioned the bad so far. <laughs> is that it contains only proven Premier League players. We're not sure if a Buendia, a Saar, a Sancho, a Tony can step up, right? I know some of them already play in the league, but you know, times change. <laughs> for me, it's a lot safer to just wait and see and go for not only the proven players, but players you think could do very, very well. All of these, yes. But also, another good thing in this team, well, some people might not say it's good, but it's something I'm aiming for, is that I have no triple ups. And you know what? I actually only have one double up with a Trent and Salah. But I want that myself because it just adds a bit of extra flexibility, right? If someone's performing really, really well, and you've already got three of a team and you want to get someone else, you're like, oh crumbs, uh, what one do I take out just to get that player in? Uh. But if you do what I do, a no triple ups from the start, you can just move to any good performing one later on. So it's just, yeah, perfect. Basically, lads, I was watching the Olympics the other day. I saw the gymnasts. I was like, wow, look how flexible they are. I want that in my FBL team, all right? Yeah, I'm kind of stretching now, and I, oh, a bit like that. <laughs> but that is it. So right here, we have a great team on paper. Doesn't always translate to FPL points. I understand that. But all of them have very, very sexy fixtures right at the start. But also, all of them could be long-term picks as well. Like a Greenwood and Jota. I like them, especially for the start. But then after, not too sure. I don't want to have too many problems like that. But also in this team, I got a very nice price structure going on. So not only could we do very, very well at the start, but we can make sure we keep on moving, keep on improving. And that will be amazing. Uh, if worse comes to worse, we just whap out that wild card, no problem anyway. <laughs> so right now, I just want to kick back, look at that team, and say one thing. You absolutely love to see it. Oh, look how good that team is. I'm loving it. Hey, but that is going to be it for today. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your current, latest, updated draft, because I want to know, yeah? But also, remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon. Right now. <laughs>